The Union Carbide India Limited factory, known as UCIL, was built in Bhopal, India in 1969 by the Union Carbide Company. Given the city is the transportation and communications capital of India, it is a great place to start business operations, and the UCIL factory was manufactured to produce the Union Carbide Company's prized pesticide, Seven. Using a reaction between MIC and Napathol, the plant synthesized the neurotoxin 7, chemically known as carbile. This video will go over the set of unintended chemical reactions that led to the Bhopal gas tragedy. The Union Carbide Company had many deregulation factors that led to the tragedy. Among them were sales deficits in 1982, which led to staff cuts, a drop in morale, and cutting of corners. Due to overproduction of seven in accordance with local demand, droughts, and poor chemical performance, the plant's sales were half as much as needed to keep the factory up and running. And by 1984, the year of the disaster, they were under 20% of that level. The Union Carbide Company responded to this by major deregulation under the guise of a new engineer that put focus on business rather than the safety of the city of Bhopal, including firing, expensive, skilled workers, and disregarding safety features of the plant, including not replacing broken parts. The Union Carbide Company deregulated staffing requirements to cut costs, meaning many staff are not qualified enough in the case of the tragedy. The workforce was cut down to six operators per shift from 12, which was already really low for the severity of the chemicals used in the plant. Many leaks happened frequently, so many didn't take them seriously. In 1981, the chemical phosgene, which is used to make MIC in a reaction with methylamine, leaked and killed one worker 72 hours after exposure. A year later, in 1982, another phosgene leak occurred, sending 24 workers to the hospital. Needless to say, leaks were common and were never investigated. Unlike other carbile plants, UCIL did not have a computerized leak identification system, meaning employees had to sense that there was a leak. MIC is dangerous at lower amounts than it is detectable to human smell, so things can go awry before the workers could even notice it. That being, if they are even located near the leak. Three main safety systems were not even built to stop conditions under which the tragedy happened. Even despite that, two days before the tragedy, one safety system was inoperable, and the third was out of service for several weeks. Instruments of detection at the plant were unreliable, leading many employees to think they were receiving false measurements and false alarms most of the time. Several months before the accident, refrigeration units that were built to stop MIC from reacting via cooling were shut down. The public warning system was also faulty. The siren used in the plant was identical to the ones used in practice drills, which were used 20 times a week, providing no sense of urgency for the people of Bhopal. With how many safety regulations were ignored at the UCIL factory, the tragedy was almost bound to happen. Before the tragedy, tank E610 in the UCIL plant was filled to more than 50% of its capacity. The safety limit, instead of MIC being put into other spare tanks, workers didn't want to fill the spare tanks because the spares were fuller than they should have been by standard procedure. 42 tons of MIC were stored in tank E610 when 30 tons was the absolute maximum amount allowed. At 8.30 p.m. on December 2, 1984, Unskilled workers started to clean pipes by putting a hose into the pipeline system. The workers did not use a slip line to stop water from getting into the tanks, allowing for some water to get into tank E610, starting an exothermic reaction at around 10 p.m. When MIC comes into contact with water, the water hydrolyzes the MIC, creating methylamine and carbon dioxide. Although the vapor from the reaction is toxic, this wasn't the worst part. MIC and water create an exothermic reaction because as you see in the molecular structure of MIC, there are a lot of bonds. The creation of the bonds in MIC takes much more energy to form than it does for water to break them, meaning heat is released when the reaction between water and MIC occurs. 
The release of heat from this reaction is what allowed MIC to be turned into a gas from its liquid state and to escape the factory. At 10.30 p.m., the pressure in tank E610 was recorded at 2 psi. At 11.30, it was 10 psi. This was put off by the workers as a malfunctioning pressure gauge until at 11.30s, workers started to notice MIC via a burning sensation in their eyes. They told their supervisor at midnight, and he advised them to spray at the tanks and to take no further action until after a tea break. At around 12.30 on December 3rd, the tank reached 40 psi, making it begin to rumble, the concrete around it starting to break. Soon, PSI read 55, and at 250 degrees Celsius, the recording stopped. The boiling point of MIC is 39.5 degrees Celsius, making this temperature well over enough to turn MIC and the vapors produced by the reaction of water and MIC and the impurities, including chlorine compounds within the pipeline system, into a gaseous state. Now, in the gaseous state, the vapors leaked into the atmosphere. The hot rate vapor condensed and rained down to the south of the plant. The vapor cloud that condensed was heavier than air, meaning the vapors in conjunction with the cold air moved down the atmosphere where the residents of Bhopal were sleeping. Thousands of people were exposed to toxic compounds in the vapor containing not only MIC, but also chloroform, carbon dioxide, and hydrochloric acid. MIC has five warning signs, toxic, health risk, flammable, corrosive, and a general hazard. After all, the chemical is used to make pesticides, which are going to be very toxic. The exposure to the vapor killed 3,000 people instantly, and 20,000 more subsequently died due to the disease caused by MIC. There were at least 558,125 non-fatal injuries caused by the incident. The Bhopal gas tragedy was the most devastating industrial disaster that has ever happened. The Union Carbide Company decided to make large regulation efforts, cutting corners at the cost of tens of thousands of lives and the health of hundreds of thousands of people. Please consider subscribing by clicking the Minute Bio logo in the bottom right corner of your screen. With the click of a button, you can help me reach more biology students and enthusiasts across the globe.